Today on the channel, we're going to be taking a look at the Zhiyun Weebill Lab gimbal. Now, I've done a number of videos on gimbals on the channels before, and in this one, I'm going to take a look at it, give you an overview of what's included in the pack, as well as all of its features. And at the end of the video, I'm going to give you my thoughts on the Weebill and tell you what I think about it compared to some of the other gimbals that I've used before. Now, just to be clear, I was sent this one to have a look at. However, I am not being paid to make this video, and all of my thoughts were entirely my own based on experience having used other gimbals in the past. Now, the Weebill Lab is actually one of the cheaper models that is available at the moment, and that puts it in the price range of many people who are looking to get their first gimbal. And the interesting thing about this is it has a number of very special features that aren't available anywhere else. One of them is the ability for it to transmit the video to your phone with a compatible camera, and none of the other manufacturers are actually doing that at the moment, and we're going to actually take a look at that in a lot more detail as well throughout this video. Anyway, let's get on with it. Let's have a look at what's included in the pack and then we'll take a look at it in action. Upon opening the box, you will find a nice foam case inside that holds the gimbal and all its accessories. In the middle, you'll find the gimbal itself, which is locked in its transit mode, and around it, you'll see all the accessories. Now, they include in the pack a tripod, which screws onto the bottom to allow you to stand it up. There is a camera riser plate, as well as a camera attachment plate, which mounts onto the bottom of your camera and slots onto the gimbal. Finally, there's a little pouch which holds the cables and accessories for connecting it to your camera ready to use. A nice feature of this gimbal is that it has an external removable battery and this simply slots into the back section of the gimbal and it has an external battery charger which plugs into USB as well. Now the nice thing about this is it means you can carry extra batteries and easily carry on filming if your battery's flat without having to wait for the whole gimbal to charge. Taking a closer look now it is assembled, the gimbal is largely made of plastic with metal fittings located all over. It has a handle built into it with controls as well as a small LCD screen for changing various settings. You've got controls on the back of the handle as well as located on the side next to the power button, a trigger on the front as well as a focus controller built into the left hand side which can be used for zoom and focus. It's also got axis locks built in as well that allow you to lock the gimbal to prevent the arms swinging it around in transit. To balance the gimbal, you have adjustment levers located on each axis with markers on the top two axes allow you to precisely set the position and mark it down should you need to remember it in the future. Another nice feature on this gimbal is the quick release camera plate. You simply push the lever in and the camera will come off with the plate remaining connected to the base of your camera. This plate is Arca Swiss compatible so it means it's quick and easy to move from tripod to gimbal without having to change any of the screws. Now the gimbal does have two USB ports, one on the front and back for connecting it to your camera. It has an accessory port on the side as well as an additional handle screw port on the back to allow you to actually move the handle to to the top and I'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Okay, so taking a closer look at the lab in hand. Now it weighs just around 970 grams and it has a capacity of around three kilos, making it ideal for most mirrorless models. Now I've got it set up here with the Sony a6400 with the 18 to 105 lens. This setup is also compatible with the USB as well, which means I can actually control the gimbal via the built-in controls as well as on the phone, but it also allows me to use that special wireless transmission feature, which I'll talk about a little bit more in a minute. Now, overall, it does everything you would expect a gimbal to do. It has most of the smart shots we've come to expect, things like time lapse and motion lapse and tracking. It doesn't have active track like we've seen on, say, the Ronin SC, but it does have all of the camera related smart features that you would expect to be able to get some nice shots. Now, there are a few specific things on this gimbal I really like compared to the others, and I want to talk about them a little bit more now. The first one of them is the little built in LCD screen. And whilst it is very small, it is absolutely perfect for to be able to change any of the settings and just get the gimbal set up. And I know the other gimbals out there do have a screen option but this is built in there are no extras to buy and it is small but it allows you to do what you need to do it also allows you to change the camera settings as well if your camera is compatible and I absolutely loved having that there it's nice and small it's in the middle and it just allows you to get the settings changed quickly and easily
easily and then carry on with what you were doing. One of the other really nice features is the built-in focus control. Now it isn't a bolt-on accessory on the side, it is built into the handle, it allows focus or zoom depending on what your setup is and it is on the left hand side. Now there is one downside to it for me specifically is because I'm left-handed, it does rub on my hand when I'm holding it like that and it's not that it changes the settings, it just hurts the top of my hand a little bit. So when I'm using it I'm having to use it sort of either that way or I'm having to hold it a little bit further down but it is very nice to have that focus control built in it is a small knob as we've seen on the other gimbals but it does allow you to get that focus done if you do need to do it it does have the built-in axis locks like we've seen on the other gimbals and it's really handy when you're transporting it things aren't flapping around now one of the other nice things I really like on it is the ability to move the handle now if you do a lot of filming in either flashlight or shotgun mode so you're doing it like that traditionally you're holding the gimbal like this and it isn't the best way to do it. Now one nice feature is they've got a mounting post at the top here so you can simply unscrew the handle off the back, move it to the top and you then have the ability to hold the gimbal like that. So if you are doing a lot of low level shooting it is much easier to be able to hold it like that than holding it like a rod in your hand in the flashlight mode and then you can simply flip it up like that, move it around like that and whilst you've still got the handle on the back you've still got clearance with my hand no problem at all and it is a really nice way of doing it and it is one of my favourite features on this gimbal overall. Now I'm just going to flip him back there so I can put him back down. Now I have been using this for about two months and overall I am impressed with it. It's done everything I've expected it to do. Whilst I, I will say the overall fit and finish doesn't feel quite as good as some of the other gimbals out there, functionality wise overall it's done it exactly as I've expected it to do it. Now I have found the app a little bit quirky now and again and I will talk about that a little bit more in a minute but it does what you need it to do and it covers all of the basics well. The next thing I want to do now is walk you guys through the app and we're going to take a look at this wireless image transmission system that is built into it as well. Now this is something I have not seen on any other gimbal and it is the ability for this to transmit the video with a compatible camera via USB to your smartphone and it means that you're able to frame shots, control the gimbal but actually see the wireless image on the screen on your smartphone via the Wi-Fi connection and this is a unique feature to this range of gimbals that no one else has. So I'm going to show you that a little bit in a minute as well and then we're going to actually out, take a look at it out and about because I took it down the beach and at the end of the video I'm going to give you my final thoughts on it. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is give you guys a walk through the app and actually show you that wireless video transmission in action. Now, I've got the phone connected to the gimbal and it's fitted with a compatible camera, so I got my Sony A6400 fitted with the USB cable. Now, this camera does allow full control, so it means we can start stop recording, control the focus, the shutter, but also change the camera settings as well. We can change the ISO, the shutter speed, and all of those things too. Now, looking around the screen along the top, you've got the home button, and next to that, you've got the wireless button, which allows you to set up the connection to the device. Across from that then you've got the mode options and this is where you actually set the mode of the gimbal on what you want it to do whether it be field of view mode, phone go mode, vortex and all of the special modes that they do include. Looking down the left hand side in the big white circle with the red dot in the middle is start stop recording so if I just hit that it'll actually tell the camera to start recording and then I can hit stop Next to that, you've got a shutter button, which tells it to fire a still. And then the icon below that allows you to actually try and play back some images if you have a compatible camera. On the screen, we've then got some on-screen controls. So we've got this little dot over here, which allows me to actually control the gimbal. And then the one on the right-hand side lets me actually tilt the axis as well. Not that you'd normally want to do that one. And then looking across at the bottom, the little circle in a bigger circle with some lines around it actually recenters the gimbal back to the middle and then moving right over to the side you've got this little one here which hides all of the on-screen information. Then looking down along the bottom you've got your camera controls and this is allows you to set your shutter speed, your ISO, your aperture, whether you want automatic white balance, your EV 
And then on the other corner, you can see you've actually got your battery levels for your devices as well. So it actually shows you the current state of play on what those devices are actually at too. Now, as I said, this software has the built-in video image transmission. And the way it works is it takes it with a compatible camera out over the USB and will wirelessly transmit it over Wi-Fi to your device. So for instance, if I was to spin this round to me and have it pointing backwards a minute, and if I now click this little video transmission button in the top corner, you can see that it's now actually come up live on the screen. Now, there is some lag with this. It is not instantaneous. It is not the kind of wireless transmission you will find, say, on some of the DJI aircraft or OcuSync or analog FPV. There is a delay to it. However, it is perfectly adequate for lining up shots. It's ideal for being able to frame things and be able to make sure that you've got it just as you want it. And whilst there is a second or two delay, it does mean you are able to use the gimbal remotely. So if you did want to do something like a time lapse or something like that, and you want to put it up on the rocks, you can see that video transmission live on the screen as well. And this is a completely unique feature these guys have, and I haven't seen anyone else do this built into the gimbal yet. Moving around to the top right hand corner, you then have the main settings and some of the other special features as well. So on the top left, you've got the stabilizer settings, which allows you to set the strength, the zoom sensitivity and the focus sensitivity of the gimbal. You've then got the option to add a LUT. So if you are using something like S-Log, you can actually upload a LUT. So the live stream will actually have the LUT in view. So you'll see what you're actually going to get on the output rather than the actual S-Log traditional image. You've got control mode, which allows you to do joystick control, altitude control, or close. So I'm going to put it back on joystick control. We've got the option to do the device calibrations from in the menu as well. You've got information, you've got image overlays. Now this one is quite good actually. This allows you to do a whole host of overlays onto the image as well as turn on things like the histogram. So if I turn on the histogram, you can see that's appeared in the corner, but you've got some cool options as well, which allow you to do things like set the uh, image. So let me just zoom the camera right back out. You've got the, that color look, you've got that one there, you've then got this one here, you've then got this one here, you've got some of the color ones, you've got the LUT option, you've got a zoom option as well, which allows you to zoom in. You've got the option to add grids, so you can put grids over the screen as well. Some boxes, if you want to image it, say 16 by 9, 4 by 3, all of those things, depending on what you want to do. And then you've got some other little boxes like that as well. So there are some really cool options within the app for overlays on the live feed as well. Below that, we've then got the follow focus options, which you tap that and it'll bring the focus and zoom controls up on the screen. You've then got the scene mode. You would click that depending on what you're actually doing with the gimbal and it'll actually allow you to change how it behaves. And then at the bottom, you've got the option for live streaming, whether it be Facebook, YouTube and other places like that, because you can do it directly from the device as well. So that is pretty much the overall features on the app from a high level. There is a bit more into it if you want to delve into it, but overall that is the basic overview. Now, as I said, the real nice thing with it is this live feed. And again, whilst it isn't instantaneous, it is nice for, to be able to frame shots wirelessly without having a cable. And you can actually put the gimbal in some quite interesting places and then be able to actually look what it's seeing as it's doing it. Okay, so I'm done at the beach today and I've been testing the Weebill and I've had it with my Sony A6400 on the 18-105. to Now I've got it in selfie mode at the moment. I'm having to hold this by hand. Now I've got it out a little bit purely because the lens isn't quite as wide as I would like. There's no face tracking or nothing like that, so I'm having to keep myself in shot. Now I've been testing it with all of the features, the motion lapse, the time lapse, the stabilization, and really I haven't had too many issues. It's done everything I would expect a gimbal to do. It's nice and light, it's small, and it's pretty easy to carry as well. And it folds up nicely with the little locks on the arms as well. Now I have to say using the app it's not quite as polished as say the DJI Ronin app and I have been finding that there is one or two little quirks on it in the way it connects to the gimbal and every now and again it'll disconnect or when you change a setting it actually causes the gimbal to go dead and you have to reboot it but overall it does have all of the basic functionality covered. Really as I mentioned it's just not quite as polished as the DJI app and it doesn't feel quite as home and, and as 
settled as you do on the Ronin and sometimes it's a bit of a fiddle to get to the settings you want but other than that the gimbal itself performs exactly as I would expect it to and again this is on the lower price range of the gimbals so you do need to take that into account now one nice feature with it is is that you can connect it to your camera and have the built-in image transmission system and you can do it with the Sony a6400 and then it transmits that to your phone and that is really a nice feature as well because it means you can do it remotely you can pop it up on a rock or on a place and you can just move to the side and then control the gimbal from your phone but actually see the image transmission as well now it, there is some latency on it it's not as fast as you would expect a normal transmission to be on say Lightbridge OcuSync on the FPV systems and it can get quite blocky but it does give you the ability to see what you're doing and it really should be used for framing and not really much else but it is a nice feature to have and it is something we'd like to see on the other gimbals as well really that's it from me being out and about and I'll pop back to the studio. And that is pretty much it for this video. Now I have to say I've been using it for about a month and a half and two months and overall I'm really happy with it. The app is a little bit buggy if I'm honest. It does have some quirks. It does crash every now and again and it has this strange thing that you will change a setting on the app but it won't actually change or you change it and it causes the gimbal to go limp which is a bit strange as well and I have had that happen once or twice. But overall from a stability point of view it does work very well and I've been really happy with that. It costs at the moment around $360, so if you are considering a gimbal, it is well worth looking at. If you need that wireless image transmission system, these are the only models out there right now that do this, so you're going to want to go with one of these gimbals. If you need the ability to put the handle on the back as well, that is the same, although you can add additional handles on some of the other gimbals, but again, it is a built-in optional extra. I do think overall it is actually great value. The fact you do have that built-in LCD screen and controls you do have the ability to move the handle and that wireless video transmission and the ability to change the battery cheaply and easily and not have to change the whole handle on the bottom as well is a big bonus too because it does have that removable battery unlike the others that are built into the main handle of the device now that is it for this video i'll put a link to it in the description as well if you're looking for a gimbal it is well worth a look and check it out again as i said for me it's done what i've expected it to do i just do think the software is a little bit buggy. If you've liked what you've seen, please do subscribe to the channel. Please do check out some of my other videos. And if you like what you see, please do like and share. That's it. Thank you for watching. And I will release another video again soon.